Hello! I am so totally excited for yet another book haul. Yes, you heard that right. Um, this I am just dubbing as my summer book haul. Um, yeah, not being able to fully do the things a person no normally does during summer just has me going to the thrift stores, I guess. So let's just get into it. I will say that there's also a um, we went on a little road trip to another city, um, staying safe and staying sanitized, and uh, stopped in at a couple of their thrift stores as well, so yeah, it's an accumulation. So let's get started. Um, I'm not going to specify what pile came from what store, whatever, it doesn't really matter, does it? So I got the Strong's Exhaustive Concordance. I have been wanting uh, a, I have been wanting a concordance for many many years, but I just never wanted to spend the really high prices that these thick guys are. So um, I'm pretty sure I got this for a dollar, which is like nuts. But we're gonna try something different this time. I'm gonna try stacking them this way. There still will be too many for this, but. Um, Let's continue. Okay, um, I'm just gonna throw these in real quick because they came from the Dollarama. So I got these for four bucks each, which is expensive compared to the thrift store prices, but um, they are full on Star Wars um, comic book, um, graphic novel type thing. So I've got three different editions. Um, so I'm really excited about that. My husband loves Star Wars. I enjoy Star Wars, but I don't necessarily love them. So I'm, I'm going to give um, the comic book graphic novel a shot. I'm kind of just trying to pick like the big books and then go down to the little books. I don't know if that'll work. Okay, so I got these two. This is The Lord of the Rings, um, The Two Towers, and The Return of the King. Unfortunately, they didn't have... Um, the Fellowship of the Ring nor The Hobbit, but I figured I would grab these up for a dollar. And they are illustrated editions, so they have illustrations every now and then, which is really interesting. So I'm glad to have those for my Tolkien collection, but adding to that Tolkien collection, um, I got... The Legend of Sigurd and Gudrun. I haven't heard of this at all, but um, it's edited by Christopher Tolkien, so I'm thinking this is one of his um, pieces of writing that uh, didn't get published published until after he had passed. So I've got that one. Carrying on. Um, I picked this one up. Uh, the Host by Stephanie Meyer. I feel like Possibly Chantel at An Intentional Life had read this one and said it wasn't too bad. Chantel, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, yeah, so it was, again, all of these books are going to be from 25 cents to probably $4, and $4 is rare. So it's usually between 25 cents and $2 usually. So I've got that one as well. Um, I picked up, I just love finding these um, Bible study uh, workbooks that are blank, like that someone has not written in yet. I love it. And this is actually The Best Yes by Lisa Turkers. This is actually a book that I have been wanting to read. So yeah, when I get around to it, I will have the study guide. So that's great. I found The Inheritance and Other Stories by Robin Hobb and Megan Lindholm. So I have just so far read the Farseer trilogy of Robin Hobb and I enjoyed that trilogy. So we'll see how that book goes. I think it's just a collection of short stories. Okay, um, this I picked this one because I had gone to the till and they were like, oh well there's a, if you buy so many you get one free and you have this so many, do you want one free? So I was like, ah, okay, I'll just quickly run and grab one. And this is what I picked. So, Heretics of Dune by Frank Herbert. Um, obviously the author of Dune. 
But I was reading in this little like list of all of Frank Herbert's books and like I'm confused on the order. Like the, these are a series, right? I don't know. Um, someone please help me understand how the order of these books go because I've also picked up the Children of Dune and Dune Messiah, so um, yeah, I don't know how that works. This one I picked up because it was cheap. It is the Broadview Anthology of Poetry. I'm hoping to find, ooh, somebody's study notes from class. I'm hoping to find some poetry that I enjoy and guess I'm just gonna try with that one as well so hopefully that one works I've got uh, man in the blue moon by Michael Morris I don't know anything about this any of these books that I have never heard of before I probably just read a bit of the blurb in the back and thought that was interesting enough for a dollar so there's that one and then we've got obsessed by Ted Decker uh, I don't know anything about this one, but it does seem interesting and has a, a serial killer aspect to it, so we'll see how that one goes. I don't do well with serial killer like movies and TV, but I'm thinking possibly if it's in book format I'll be able to handle it. I don't know. We're gonna try. So, let's see. I picked up In the Way of Jesus by Paul D. Croker. Again, never heard of this book or this author, but the blurb sounded good. And Let My People Go by Cal R. Bombay. A um, little blurb at the back. Most of the children and women were priced at two or three cows each, though adolescent girls could cost more. And I've been really... My heart's been really heavy for human trafficking, um, specifically in the sex trade, but the whole, the whole thing needs to go, obviously. But, um, so my heart's been really heavy on that, and I'm wanting to read some more books and consume a bit more content on how, um, like, I can help make a change in the world, I guess. I don't know. So when I read the back of that one, I thought that would be a good one to pick up. I've got A Gentleman in Moscow. I found this one. I was so excited to find it. Everyone on booktube right now is talking about A Gentleman in Moscow and loving it. And so actually one of the books I read um, on our road trip was a nonfiction, and he referenced this book. So I was like, you know what? I I gotta get this book. So I'm really, 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 really excited to read this one. I hope it is good. Obviously, I hope all of these are good, right? Uh, okay. Man, some of these I bought like a couple months ago, and I don't even remember that I bought them. So, Great Expectations by Charles Dickens. I have only read A Christmas Story by him and it was decent, eh. So we'll see how this one goes. Then we have, oh, this one I'm looking forward to, Irish folk, no, Irish fairy and folk tales. So, um, yeah, fairy tales from Ireland. I'm really excited to get my hands on some of these stories and read them. Um, Jean at Jean Bookish Thoughts, she does a lot of reading um, on, mythology and fairy tales and stuff and she's um, getting more into other cultures than her own and stuff so it's been kind of inspiring so yeah that one up okay so I picked up The Marvels by Brian Selznick I don't know anything about this but I started flipping through it and it is largely told in picture format I think it looks like maybe the first half is in picture format and the second half is uh, written words. So, never read this one. Love the edges. So cool. So 
so excited for my new bookshelf that's coming. Well, it's not coming, I'm building it, but I digress. I'm still excited for it. Um, okay, Adventures of Huckleberry Finn by Mark Twain. Uh, this was just a really, really, really interesting edition of this book, even though it is actually like coming apart, which is pretty sad, but still love it. I have not read that one though yet, so let me know if you have read it. I picked up The Sparrow by Mary, Mary Doria Russell. I've heard some things about this on booktube and I had put it on my Goodreads to read list and then I found it in the thrift store so I actually don't remember why I wanted to read this one but yeah I guess we'll find out at some point. Hey this looks like Harry Potter. Is that a Harry Potter book? Let me know. No it can't be because it's the author. I don't know. I found another Stephen Lawhead you guys. So The Paradise War, Song of Albion book one. Super excited. You guys know I like Stephen Lawhead. I've seen this book so often at thrift stores. Mirror Mirror by Gregory Maguire and at, at some point I obviously just decided it was time to give in and buy it and give it a read. So let me know if you guys have read this one. Uh, the Quiet Girl by Peter Ho Hoeg. Oh, hog, hog. I don't know. I actually don't remember picking this book up. Don't know what it's about. Can't remember anything about it or why I picked it up. So let me know if you have read it. We've got Dry by Neil Schusterman and Jared Schusterman. I read this one in spring and I quite enjoyed it and I was super thrilled to find it at the thrift store. So I've got that one in hard, hardback as well. So that's really cool. Uh, this is a classic, a classic that I've never heard of before. Have you guys read or heard of Kim? I know nothing about Kim. I've never heard of anyone ever talk about it. Ever. So, I've got that one. What else do we have here? Okay, we've got She by Rebecca St. James and Linda Hunter Bjorklund. Rebecca St. James is a Christian artist, singer, girl and I remember loving her music when I was young so there that's her um so yeah this is the woman you're made to be and it's a Christian nonfiction so that one I presume will be good The Shadow of the Wind by Carlos Ruiz Zafon this one I also had put on my Goodreads TBR a while back um because of booktube and I don't remember why, but I obviously found something of the synopsis interesting. All right, we've got The Game by Monica Hughes. No clue. All right, so William Faulkner, who I believe is a classic author, um, As I Lay Dying. No idea. Have you guys read any William Faulkner? Uh, we've got Whoa, hi. The Known World by Edward P. Jones. Don't remember why I picked this one up. The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald. On booktube here, I've actually seen a lot of polarizing views on this book. Some love, some hate. If I ever feel the need, I will read it, I guess. It's in my collection now. Going along more with um, the human trafficking thing, um, I've got Forgotten Girls, Stories of Hope and Courage by K. Marshall Storm and Michelle Rickett. Um, and I think this is, this is more fo focused on women. So think of the little girls you know, your daughter, a niece, a friend's child, and think about this, little girls are tossed away every day. So it's gonna be a hard read, but I think it will be um, important. Then we have Love Wins by Rob Bell, a book about heaven, hell, and the fate of every person who ever lived. I've heard good things about Rob Bell. I've never actually read any of his books, so that'll be a first for me. Okay, so Silk by Linda J. 
Chaken? Chaken? Ch I don't know. This is so stereotypical of the early 90s um, book covers, which is funny. But I'm really excited to read this one. I don't remember what it was about exactly, but I remember that I was looking forward to it. So, um, Around the World in 80 Days. I have been wanting to read this book for a while, and um, a lot of these books I have had in my cart online at one point or another at usually a discounted price, but still um, much more than a dollar a piece. So very excited to have this old vintage hardback. We've got Praise Habit by David Crowder. I did not know that David Crowder had even written a book, so that was kind of interesting. Um, I, I didn't love the David Crowder band, but I enjoyed some of their songs. So, and I don't like sticker price tags. You should just have a sign that says, all these books are this price, whatever. So you don't have to deal with these stickers. But anyway, yeah, that'll be a good one. Uh, the Devil in the White City by Eric Larson. I have heard, I think, good things about this on BookTube. I remember seeing it around quite a few months ago. I think um, Reagan at Peru's Project read it, and I don't remember if she liked it or didn't like it, but it was a dollar, so I'll try it. We've got Neon Soul, a collection of poetry and prose by Alexandra L. I'm thinking maybe to try, oh, these are really short ones, and that's more, I think is more my style. And also, this is a newer book, so I think more modern poetry might be more my style. So, yeah, we will see. I don't know about this, uh, where'd it go? This one. I don't know about that one, because that one might have like a lot of old poetry still. So, and then we've got Reluctant Burglar by Jill Elizabeth Nelson, To Catch a Thief, book one. Yeah, we'll see, we'll see. It talked about art, so I was already intrigued with that. I found A Darker Shade of Magic by V.E. Schwab. I'm sure most of BookTube has heard of V.E. Schwab and or this specific book, so looking forward to it. Woo, look at this. Oh, I love books. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. So, because of Chantel at An Intentional Life, I do have the first one, um, number, the number one ladies detective agency. It's just on my currently reading pile, but, um, I found these three as well. So I don't actually know how this series works by Alexander McCall Smith. So I've got this one, but it has a different cover. So I don't know if it's the same book, just with a different cover. And then Morality for Beautiful Girls and the Kalahari Typing School for Men. So I got those. And I believe from what Chantal has said, those follow um, an African woman who is like an amateur detective, I guess, or just kind of a wannabe detective. And then I came across The Chinese Nail Murders, a Judge Lee detective story by Robert Van Gulick. And this sounded very similar to that vein, um, except instead of African culture, it is Chinese culture. So I was like, yeah, I'm gonna give that one a try too. So hopefully that one works. Um, we've got Dream Treaders by Wayne Thomas Batson. Don't remember. I've picked up, and since um, picking this one up, I've already read it. Um, Nevermore by Jessica Townsend, The Trials of Morgan Crow. So there's this hardback. Um, it's pretty popular as well. How far back can we go? I found Arch Enemy by Frank Bedor, The Looking Glass Wars. Oh right, that's why. No rabbits, no tea parties, step into real Wonderland. This one was um, an Alice in Wonderland retelling, so I'm pretty excited to get to this one. What have we got here, guys? 
All right, the next one I picked up was The Memory Keeper's Daughter by Kim Edwards. This one, again, I have seen at the thrift store all the time, so I decided, actually, I decided it was time to get it because it, again, was part of the, oh, you have four books, you can get one free, so I just grabbed this one. Oh man, okay, let's start piling them up here, eh? This one I won as an Instagram giveaway from Jane. I will leave her Instagram account linked down below. Guys, totally check her out. Um, she let me pick which book and I, this one came in the mail and I'm really excited about it. The Story Peddler by Lindsay A. Franklin from the Weaver Trilogy. This is book one. I've heard great things about this trilogy, so I'm really excited to get to it. All right, so. From here, guys. I just don't know. Okay, now we're into more of the smaller books. We'll go. Okay, we'll go with these. So I really like Law and Order SVU, which I know that a lot of the world loves it as well. But that is um, a, a TV show directed by Dick Wolf, and I did not know that he wrote books, but he apparently wrote this one. So I picked it up based on that. Don't know what it's about though. Um, Multiply by Francis Chan. Uh, I have never heard of this book by him, although I do love his preaching and his writing, so I'm hoping to love this one. These two, oh no. Okay, so these two are like, I haven't heard anything about them or the authors, but they give me certain vibes. This one it gives me vibes of Pirates of the Caribbean, and I love that movie, so we're just gonna go with it, I should say. This one is called The Lost Island by Preston and Child. And then this one is, oh, wow, they both have The Lost something. Hmm. This one is The Lost Order by Steve Barry, and this one reminded me of National Treasure, which I love those movies also. So that's the reasoning behind those ones. I picked up The Woman in Cabin 10 just because I'm trying to dip my toe into a little bit more thriller type stories and I know some people like this one, some people don't. Eh, it'll be my first Ruth Ware so we'll see. Then I found another Robin Hobb. I found Fool's Quest. This is book two of the Fitz and the Fool trilogy so this is like far into her um, elderling series. Uh, but I figure you don't find Robin Hobb in the thrift store very often, so when you do, you should dab them up. So I've got that one. Um, speaking of Robin Hobb, maybe I'm contradicting myself here, uh, but I also found Dragon Keeper by Robin Hobb, and I haven't heard this one. This one is not part of the Elderling series, so this is something completely different. Then I found Jaws by Peter Benchley, you guys. I love Jaws. No, no. Let me backtrack. I love sharks. And Jaws is a decent movie. It's not my favorite. But I'm wondering if the reading of Jaws will be an interesting experience because you're reading it instead of watching like bad 80s CGI, you know? So we'll see about that one. Uh, this one, the Druid's Tune by O.R. Melling. I, yeah, don't know why I picked this one up. Can't remember. It's been a while, guys. Same with this one, The Cobbler's Kids by Rosie Harris. He dominated their lives, but could they ever escape? Have you guys watched that movie? It's fairly old, I think, from the 80s, maybe. Um, it's called Not Without My Daughter. That's that's what this book is making me think of, so I don't know, we will see. And then I found another Stephen Lawhead, uh, The Celtic Crusades, The Iron Lance. So, oh yeah, so excited. And then I picked up The Case for Faith by Lee Strobel because I have The Case for Christ and The Case for a Creator. Um, I have to double check that and just in case I ended up buying two of this one like I can't remember if I have the case for creator Or if I have this one, I don't know, but I have this one and then my brother-in-law was really interested in the case for Christ So I figured I would pick this one up for him. It was only 50 cents. So not a big deal 
And then uh, I'm still trying to do the childhood reads next May. And I remember reading The Chrysalids in grade eight by John Wintown. So again, kind of weird. Read this in a Christian school. I don't know what's gonna be in it. We'll see, we'll see. These two, I was so excited, you guys, to find these at the thrift store for a dollar because um, it was like only a few days before I had gone in that I put them in my cart online um, and I was gonna pay like, I don't know what, $10 a piece? And I got them for a dollar a piece. So, C.S. Lewis, Reflections on the Psalms and the Four Loves. Very, very, very happy to have these and totally looking forward to getting into them. I have been looking forever for The Pilgrim's Progress by John Bunyan and finally I have found it. And then as I was browsing through it, uh, it's all gonna fall apart, isn't it? It's one of those books. I had actually started the audiobook for this and the English I didn't realize was, was in a, like an older style English. So I was like, oh boy, I think I might need to read it physically, so hopefully that'll help. I've got um, Hard Times by Charles Dickens. I feel like I've heard of this book before. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Guess we'll find out. This book, if you guys remember, I'm collecting this series of um, the Lord of the Rings, and so now I found The Hobbit to match, so very happy about that. And then I have, this vintage copy of the Lord of the Rings, The Return of the King. Oh, I just love these vintage editions. Guys, my Tolkien shelf is gonna be busting. It's gonna be awesome. So I found these two um, Redwall books by Brian Jacques. Jacques? I don't know if you pronounce the S, it's French, so maybe you don't. Anyway, I've never read any Redwall books. We will give this a shot. And that, this is going to be starting a whole new thing like, who am I guys? Just you wait. Um, to Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee, also from my high school required reading. And then we've got Heidi by Joanna Flynn. I don't know, I was really drawn to the silver foil. I've never read Heidi. Um, then we've got, okay. So this confused me quite a bit. Um, if you remember, I had started reading The Face on the Mill Carton in May for my childhood reads. And then I found these two at the thrift store, different trips, but we've got The Voice on the Radio by Caroline B. Cooney and Whatever Happened to Janie by Caroline B. Cooney. Both of them say on the cover, the companion to The Face on the Mill Carton. The companion to The Face on the Mill Carton. What? I'm confused. Is this a trilogy? What? I'm, what? I'm confused. I'm confused. Let me know. Let me know if you get it. Then we've got Magic by In Angie Sage. I saw Chantel read this on her channel a little while back and it was 50 cents so I figured I would just give it a shot. I think she was a little on the fence about it but I figured for 50 cents, it's worth trying. I saw this book, Stitch Head by Guy Bass. Um, it's got these really cute little illustrations in the story. And um, I, don't, I don't like do Halloween, but I don't like Halloween, but I just figured it might fit the mood of booktube in October to read something that's a little bit more eerie I guess so I thought I should be safe with a kids book so we'll see how this one goes then I picked up listening for lions by Gloria Wellen winner of the National Book Award this one was quite quite an intriguing back here um, something about a young girl who was born and raised in Africa and then she following some events, she is taken to England um, where she is forced into a life of deception. So I'm not sure, sounded intriguing. 
Uh, I picked up My Name is Not Angelica by Scott O'Dell. Scott O'Dell wrote Island of the Blue Dolphins, which I really enjoyed, and I'm really looking forward to this book as well. Then we've got Princess Academy by Shannon Hale. Um, again, Chantelle at An Intentional Life. I think she, she said she read this one as a younger girl, maybe? I don't know when this book was published, but she had read this one and she thought I should give it a shot. So there it is. And then also by Shannon Hale is The Goose Girl. And this one is on the recommendation of Lee at Darkness Wings Reads. This is one of her favorite books. So I figured I would pick it up and give it a try. Then we've got Shadow by Jenny Moss. I must have read the back and it sounded interesting, but I don't remember now. Harriet the Spy by Louise Fitzberg. This one is because the movie Harriet the Spy is very um, memorable from my childhood, so that will be read in May. And we've got The Indian in the Cupboard by Lynn Reed Banks. It was kind of weird because when I was at the thrift store there was like, I don't know, like eight of these or something. It was weird. And then I found a Frank Riccio's The Fables of Aesop. And I was really intrigued by this. They're really, really short and I'm like totally interested. Very, very cool find. And then the last ones I've got are kids chapter books. So I've got The Littles to the Rescue and these will all be read in May. Um, the Littles Take a Trip. What else? Pippi Longstocking. Um, well, this one is just Pippi Longstocking. There's no subtitle. And then Mordecai Richler's Jacob Tutu's First Spy Case. Jacob Tutu's First Spy Case. You guys, I've got the same book? My bad. Apparently I have two of the same book now. Different covers. And then Jacob Tutu meets the Hooded Fang. So, whoo! I do have to add that as part of the buy four, get one free thing that sucks me in every time, um, I picked up this Whopper of an Archie collection. Look at this, guys. This is so fat. This is like a good two inches. That's awesome. It was like a dollar. It was like awesome. Okay, anyway. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. This is my book haul. So excited. I need to find somewhere in my house to put them. Hmm. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. <laughs> uh, I hope you guys also have a lovely day. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.